Chapter 4 Innate Immunity Functions and Reactions of Innate Immune Responses 1. Initial Response to Microbes 2. Eliminate damaged cells and initiate the process of tissue repair 3. Stimulates Adaptive Immune Responses Comparative Features of Innate and Adaptive Immunity Innate immune responses to a microbe are immediate and do not require prior exposure to the microbe. In contrast, effective adaptive immune responses to a newly introduced microbe develop over several days as clones of lymphocytes undergo expansion and differentiate into functional effector cells. There is no appreciable change in the quality or magnitude of the innate immune response to a microbe upon repeated exposure, that is, there is little or no memory. In contrast, repeated exposure to a microbe enhances the rapidity, magnitude, and effectiveness of adaptive immune responses. The innate immune response is activated by recognition of a relatively limited set of molecular structures. By contrast, the adaptive immune system potentially can recognize millions of different molecular structures of microbes, and can also recognize nonmicrobial environmental antigens as well as self-antigens that are normally present in healthy tissues. Evolution of Innate Immunity Some components of the mammalian innate immune system are remarkably similar to components in plants and insects, suggesting that these appeared in common ancestors long ago in evolution. For example, peptides that are toxic to bacteria and fungi, called defensins, are found in plants and mammals and have essentially the same tertiary structure in both life forms. Toll-like receptors, recognize pathogenic microbes and activate antimicrobial defense mechanisms are found in every life form in the evolutionary tree from insects up to mammals. The major signal transduction pathway that toll-like receptors engage to activate cells, called the NFB pathway in mammals, also shows remarkable evolutionary conservation. Recognition of Microbes and Damaged Self by the Innate Immune System The innate immune system recognizes molecular structures that are produced by microbial pathogens. The microbial substances that stimulate innate immunity are often shared by classes of microbes and are called pathogen-associated molecular patterns PAMPs. Different microbes express different structures including nucleic acids that are unique to microbes, such as double-stranded RNA found in replicating viruses and unmethylated CPG DNA sequences found in bacteria. Features of proteins that are found in microbes, such as initiation by N-formylmethionine, which is typical of bacterial proteins, and complex lipids and carbohydrates that are synthesized by microbes but not by mammalian cells, such as lipopolysaccharide, LPS, in gram-negative bacteria, lipotiochoic acid in gram-positive bacteria, and oligosaccharides with terminal mannose residues found in microbial but not in mammalian glycoproteins. Whereas the innate immune system has evolved to recognize only a limited number of molecules that are unique to microbes, the adaptive immune system is capable of recognizing many more diverse foreign substances whether or not they are products of microbes. The innate immune system recognizes microbial products that are often essential for survival of the microbes. The innate immune system also recognizes endogenous molecules that are produced by or released from damaged and dying cells. These substances are called damage-associated molecular patterns, DAMPs. DAMPs may be produced as a result of cell damage caused by infections, but they may also indicate sterile injury to cells caused by any of myriad reasons, such as chemical toxins, burns, trauma, or decreased blood supply. Damps are generally not released from cells dying by apoptosis. In some cases, healthy cells of the immune system are stimulated to produce and release certain damps, sometimes called allerments, which enhance the innate immune response to infections. The innate immune system uses several types of cellular receptors, present in different locations in cells, and soluble molecules in the blood and mucosal secretions to recognize PAMPs and DAMPs. There are many proteins present in the blood and extracellular fluids that recognize PAMPs. These soluble molecules are responsible for facilitating the clearance of microbes from blood and extracellular fluids by enhancing uptake into phagocytes or by activating extracellular killing mechanisms. 
whereas the adaptive immune system can distinguish between antigens of different microbes of the same class and even different antigens of one microbe, innate immunity can distinguish only classes of microbes, or only damaged cells from healthy cells, but not particular species of microbes or cell types. The innate immune system does not react against normal, healthy cells and tissues. The failure to recognize healthy self is because of three main mechanisms 1. Normal cells do not produce ligands for innate immune receptors, 2. These receptors are located in cellular compartments where they do not encounter host molecules they could recognize, 3 and regulatory proteins expressed by normal cells prevent activation of various components of innate immunity. Cell-associated pattern recognition receptors and sensors of innate immunity. Phagocytes, including neutrophils and macrophages, and dendritic cells express the widest variety and greatest number of these receptors, to elicit inflammation and subsequent adaptive immunity. Pattern recognition receptors are linked to intracellular signal transduction pathways that activate various cellular responses, including the production of molecules that promote inflammation and destroy microbes. Toll-like receptors Toll-like receptors, TLRs, are an evolutionarily conserved family of pattern recognition receptors expressed on many cell types that recognize products of a wide variety of microbes as well as molecules expressed or released by stressed and dying cells. The cytoplasmic domain of toll was found to be similar to the cytoplasmic region of the receptor for the innate immune cytokine interleukin-1, IL-1. These discoveries led to the identification of mammalian homologues of toll, which were named toll-like receptors. There are nine different functional TLRs in humans, named TLR1 through TLR9. The TLRs are type I integral membrane glycoproteins that contain leucine-rich repeats flanked by characteristic cysteine-rich motifs in their extracellular regions, which are involved in ligand binding, and a toll-slash-IL1 receptor, tier, homology domain in their cytoplasmic tails, which is essential for signaling. Tier domains are also found in the cytoplasmic tails of the receptors for the cytokines IL-1 and IL-18, and similar signaling pathways are engaged by TLRs, IL-1, and IL-18. Mammalian TLRs are involved in responses to a wide variety of molecules that are expressed by microbial but not by healthy mammalian cells. Examples of bacterial products that bind to TLRs are LPS and lipotycoicacid, which are constituents of the cell walls of gram-negative bacteria, and gram-positive bacteria, respectively, and flagellin, the protein subunit component of the flagella of modal bacteria. Examples of nucleic acids that are TLR ligands, are double-stranded RNAs, which make up the genomes of some viruses and are generated during the life cycle of most RNA viruses, but are not produced by eukaryotic cells. Single-stranded RNAs, which are distinguished from cellular cytoplasmic single-stranded RNA transcripts by their location within endosomes and by their high guanosine and uridine content, and unmethylated CPG dinucleotides, which are common in prokaryotes but rare in vertebrate genomes. TLRs are also involved in response to endogenous molecules whose expression or location indicates cell damage. Examples of host molecules that engage TLRs include heat shock proteins, HSBs, which are chaperones induced in response to various cell stresses, and high mobility group BOX1, HMGB1, an abundant DNA binding protein involved in transcription and DNA repair. Both HSBs and HMGB1 are activate TLR2 and TLR4 signaling in dendritic cells, macrophages, and other cell types. Structure, location, and specificities of mammalian TLRs note that some TLRs are expressed on the cell surface and others in endosomes. TLRs may form homodimers of heterodimers. The structural basis of TLR specificities resides in the multiple extracellular leucine-rich modules of these receptors, which bind directly to PAMPs or to adapter molecules that bind the PAMPs. There are between 16 and 28 leucine-rich repeats in TLRs, and each of these modules is composed of 20 to 30 amino acids that include conserved LXXLXLXXN motifs, where L is leucine, X is any amino acid, 
and N is asparagine, and amino acid residues that vary between different TLRs. The ligand binding variable residues of the modules are on the convex surface formed by helices and turns or loops ligand binding to the leucine rich domains causes physical interactions between TLR molecules and the formation of TLR dimers. The repertoire of specificities of the TLR system is extended by the ability of TLRs to heterodimerize with one another, for example, dimers of TLR2 and TLR6 are required for responses to peptidoglycan. Specificities of the TLRs are also influenced by various non-TLR accessory molecules. This is best defined for the TLR4 response to LPS. LPS first binds to soluble LPS binding protein in the blood or extracellular fluid, and this complex serves to facilitate delivery of the LPS to the surface of the responding cell. An extracellular protein called MD2, myeloid differentiation protein 2, binds to the lipid A component of LPS, forming a complex that then interacts with TLR4 and initiates signaling. Another protein called CD14 is also required for efficient LPS-induced signaling. CD14 is expressed by most cells, except endothelial cells, as a soluble protein or as a glycophosphatidylinositol-linked membrane protein. Both CD14 and MD2 can also associate with other TLRs. Thus, Different combinations of accessory molecules in TLR complexes may serve to broaden the range of microbial products that can induce innate immune responses. TLRs are found on the cell surface and on intracellular membranes, and are thus able to recognize microbes in different cellular locations. TLRs 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6 are expressed on the plasma membrane. TLRs 3, 7, 8, and 9 are mainly expressed inside cells on endoplasmic reticulum and endosomal membranes, double-stranded RNA, which binds to TLR3, and unmethylated CPG motifs, which bind to TLR9. TLR7 and TLR8 recognize single-stranded RNA, and TLR9 recognizes single or double-stranded DNA, these nucleic acid ligands are not unique to microbes, but their location in endosomes likely reflects origin from microbes. A protein in the endoplasmic reticulum called UNC93B is required for the endosomal localization and proper function of TLRs 3, 7, 8, and 9. Genetic deficiency in UNC93B leads to susceptibility to certain viral infections, especially herpes simplex virus encephalitis, demonstrating the importance of the endosomal location of TLRs for innate defense against viruses. TLR recognition of microbial ligands results in the activation of several signaling pathways, and ultimately transcription factors, which induce the expression of genes whose products are important for inflammatory and antiviral responses. The signaling pathways are initiated by ligand binding to the TLR at the cell surface or in the endoplasmic reticulum or endosomes, leading to dimerization of the TLR proteins. Ligand-induced TLR dimerization is predicted to bring the tier domains of the cytoplasmic tails of each protein close to one another. This is followed by recruitment of tier domain-containing adapter proteins, which facilitate the recruitment and activation of various protein kinases, leading to the activation of different transcription factors. The major transcription factors that are activated by TLR signaling pathways are nuclear factor B, NFB, activation protein 1, AP1, interferon response factor 3, IRF3, and IRF7. NF band AP1 stimulate the expression of genes encoding many of the molecules required for inflammatory responses, including inflammatory cytokines, such as TNF and IL1, chemokines, e.g., CCL2 and CXCL8, and endothelial adhesion molecules, e.g., E-selectin. IRF3 and IRF7 promote production of type I interferons, IFN and IFN, which are important for antiviral innate immune responses. Different combinations of adapters and signaling intermediates are used by different TLRs, accounting for the common and unique downstream effects of the TLRs. For example, Cell surface TLRs that engage the adapter MYD88 lead to NFB activation, 
and TLR signaling that uses the adapter called TRIF, tier domain containing adapter inducing IFN, leads to IRF3 activation. All TLRs except TLR3 signal through MYD88 and are therefore capable of activating NF band inducing an inflammatory response. TLR3 signals through TRIF and therefore activates IRF3 and induces expression of type I interferons. TLR4 signals through both MYD88 and TRIF and is able to induce both types of responses. The endosomal TLR7 and 9, which are most highly expressed in plasmacytoid dendritic cells, see Chapter 6, signal through a MYD88 dependent. TRIF independent pathway that activates both NF band IRFs. Therefore, TLR7 and TLR9, like TLR4, induce both inflammatory and antiviral responses. We will discuss the details of NF activation in Chapter 7. Signaling pathways and functions of TLRs TLRs 1, 2, 5, and 6 use the adapter protein MYD88 and activate the transcription factors NF band AP1. TLR3 uses the adapter protein TRIF and activates the IRF3 and IRF7 transcription factors. TLR4 can activate both pathways. TLR7 and 9 in the endosome use MYD88 and activate both NFB and IRF7.